Okay, finding internal resistance and EMF of a cell. Now, if we start with a simple circuit like the one shown here, it's got a battery, a single resistor, and an ammeter connected all in series. Um, it appears that there's only one resistor, whereas actually we now know there are not uh, a single resistor. There's also a resistance inside that cell itself, inside that battery itself. Those electrons, they're being pushed through by the chemical reaction going on uh, between the acid and the two metals in there. They find it difficult, so they're losing energy. Not only are they given energy, but they actually lose some in the battery itself. You'll know this because if you've ever touched a battery that's been on for a long time, it gets hot. Therefore, electrical energy is being converted into heat energy. So we can represent that battery instead of just a, a single battery uh, uh, circuit diagram, uh, circuit symbol, we can use this notation here. So the little r, the, little, the, the small resistor there, is a symbol that's always used to indicate internal resistance. The cell to the left, that's where the EMF, that's the, the thing that gives the electrical energy, so gives the energy per coulomb charge. Or we get the potential difference across the external resistor, the potential difference also is energy lost across the internal resistance, uh, and we can see the terminal potential difference, terminal voltage, which is actually the same as the potential difference across the resistor as well. well what do we know about this circuit? We know it's a series circuit, so we know that current is constant all the way around. We also know that the EMF, the energy given to the circuit, is equal to the sum of all the energy lost by that circuit. So uh, the EMF equals potential difference across little r, across the internal resistor, and uh, added to the potential difference across the big resistor. And the problem is that we can't get to that internal resistor, so we can't measure the potential difference across it. We also can't get to the actual cell, the EMF, uh, to measure the EMF directly. Uh, and because we can't get to the, little res the internal resistance, we can't measure little r either. Um, we can't measure them directly. However, we do know that V equals IR. Good old Ohm's law comes to the rescue again. So we, we know V equals IR, which means that the voltage across the internal resistor must be equal to the current through it multiplied by its resistance. And if we substitute that back into our formula, we get this here. So the EMF now is equal to I little r plus the potential difference across the external resistor. I've colored the two, the I and the VR in red there, just to indicate they are. we can measure them very easily. Uh, standard, normal tech, uh, sort of methods, uh, we can measure them very, very easily. And if we re rearrange that formula, we can get this. Now, as a physicist, when I see that formula, I am really imagining Y equals MX plus C. Because if we plot VR on the Y axis against I on the X axis, we get a graph of the form Y equals MX plus C, where the gradient M is actually equal to negative internal resistance. And the intercept on the, uh, on the voltage axis, on the y-axis, is equal to the EMF. And that's how we find internal resistance and EMF of a cell.